Und da sind wir wieder zurück zu der ABC Mörders. Wir müssen schnell zum Telefon gehen. Schnell, 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 schnell. I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. Ja, vielleicht hat der ja was gemeinsam, wenn er ein Halsspezialist ist, weil eine hat er dann Hustensaft gehabt und der andere das für die Stimme oder so, ne? Da war ja was. Nee. An ABC guide. The murderer's customary signature. Covered in blood this time. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean season, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical-shaped area, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Okay, we have all entdeckt. Now show me the chest again. Jab has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. Und das? Ein Siegelring. A signet ring. Very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. Schlüssel. Was ist? Okay, das hat aber nicht zählt jetzt, das muss ich dann gleich ändern. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. Warum schaut das sich alles zuerst verkehrt an? An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than a pocket watch on which it was fastened. So, was ist da jetzt? Das hat mich ja nicht gelassen. It is pointless. This is pointless. This is sinless, sagte. So, schauen wir uns die Möbel an. This place is very calming. Wilde Blumen. Kaninchenbau. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. The body is just in front of a bush. 
one of the only bushes in the surrounding area. I'm not going to leave now. I still have some clues to find. Ah, okay. Dann geht's da tatsächlich runter. Nein, geht's nicht. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. In welcher Position war Sir Carmichael, als er ermordet wurde? Mhm. In welcher Position steht aber also die anderen drei, die, an, die zu machen kann sind. Siegerling hat nichts damit zum Dumm. Zum Dumm. Zum Dumm, zum Dumm. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut the throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood of a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Was haben wir jetzt? Hat Sir Carmichael seinen Mörder gesehen? Yes. Ich glaube nicht. Ich glaube nicht. Hat nur eine einzige Verletzung, genau. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. <laughs> the killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. <laughs> the murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. Passt, dann gehen wir jetzt rein und reden mit ihm. Und schauen, was er uns sagen kann. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. So, it is not the right time. Hastings does not like very hot tea. He's going to blow on his cup for a good while before drinking. There is something very viril about him. There is something very viril about him. Franklin Clark is an adventurer, the sort of man that women like. There is something elegant about her. She has good taste, except perhaps in a choice of jewelry. <laughs> Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. Good. It is not the right time. <clears throat> My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. 
bisschen schätzig. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. Hmm. And uh, did people of the village know Sir Carmichael's habits? I don't know. It's possible. What were you doing last night? After dinner, I went to my bedroom. At eleven in the evening, the telephone rang. It was the police. I went to look for my brother. <laughs> was it a dark night? It was a new moon. I took a lantern. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. <gasps> Miss Clark! Oh, Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair. I have to help Miss Grey get her up. Tastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. Um, up, up. A tiger? A turtle? Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. <coughs> A dragon. A crane? Aber eins fehlt noch. Das Buch. Comside's private collection. Purchases since 1920. The catalogue for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. Compass, point to the thals. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong 1935. There are some very valuable objects here. I'm not going to leave now. They have some. So Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Oh, I see it coming. It's locked. And Rachel. Okay. Ah, okay, what this? Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. Huh. 
Also es muss auf jeden Fall genauso ausgerichtet sein. Das muss ich mir jetzt mal anschauen. The Cardinal Points. This book could maybe help me. Each cardinal point is associated with one animal and one color. In the middle sits the imperial dragon, and out of respect, all the others are turned towards him. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. Okay, ich schaue mal an am Tisch. Ja. Oder ich mache es ganz leicht. Wie ein Idiot. Oh ja, da schauen eh alle zu ihm. Mit dem Punkt nach vor. Der Kranich ist oben. Bei seinem Kopf ist der Kranich. So. Turtle, oh. the dragon, the crane and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. Jetzt drehen wir mal alle zu ihm hin. Aber den Kranich. The position of each motif resembles that of those on the table. Okay, da gibt's auch rot. So. Position of each motif resembles that of those on the table. Jetzt haben wir's eigentlich. Position of each motif resembles that of those on the table. Aber das mit da, das muss wahrscheinlich auch die richtige Farbe haben. Rot ist oben. Rot ist im Norden. Okay, passt. Das, das habe ich nur wissen müssen. Da habe ich es wieder vergessen. Rot und unten schwarz. Rot und unten muss schwarz sein. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. Und stürteln, stürteln. Ernest Luggen. MD Brighton Cancer Institute 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comside Cheston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Your sincerely, Ernest Logan. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. 
Indeed. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference. Okay, ich würde sagen, wir sehen uns dann im nächsten Part. Also bis dann, euer Zlavos. Tschüss, Dankeschön.